Hey, science lovers, welcome back to SourceFed. I'm Raina Scully. And I'm William Hayes. Did you see what we did there? We communicated via just our thoughts. I thought that that was only possible in anime and sci-fi shows, but neuroscientists have recently demonstrated the first successful brain-to-brain -brain communication in humans. In the past, researchers have used electroencephalogram technologies to bridge interactions between a human brain, a computer, and a robotic device. Whoa. As in, we'll have intentional action thoughts like move arm, and the computer will code those thoughts into machine lingo, and the computer will feed that code to the robot arm, and have the robot arm successfully move. Whoa. Last year, researchers took it a step further and successfully were able to have a human brain move a rat's tail just by thinking about it. When I want to move a rat's tail, I just don't do it because they're dirty. This time, though, instead of having a rat on the receiving end of the coded information, they had a human person, like me. This is especially notable because this system fulfills three conditions of direct communication between human minds. It's non-invasive, it's cortically based, and it's consciously driven. Whoa, I'm consciously driven. You are. So are you. I am. Humans. The experiment was done between two human subjects living 5,000 miles away from each other, which is very far. The emitter creates conscious motor imagery in their mind. That then creates motor cortex activity in the brain, which is interpreted by an EEG. The EEG sends the data into a computer and processes it into a binary code. Then the information is sent via the internet and another computer on the receiving end interprets the code. The receiving brain then accepts the transcranial magnetic stimulation from the computer as a phosphine, which are flashes of light in the peripheral vision that allows for the brain to decode the message. I've never heard the word phosphine before. It makes me feel inferior to other smart people. In other words, I could think, Raina is a huge idiot and no one will ever love her because of who she is as a person. That will never change because of her. And she'll hear it in her brain space. <laughs> Raina is brilliant. There's still some kinks to work out. That didn't go as I planned it to. The co-author of this research explains, this in itself is a remarkable step in human communication, but being able to do so across a distance of thousands of miles is critically important proof of principle for the development of brain-to-brain -brain communications. We believe these experiments represent an important first step in exploring the feasibility of contemplating or bypassing traditional language-based or motor-based communication. That means we can be like the people in Dragon Ball Z soon and go like this and say, Kakarot! But what does your scanner say? And then it'll be all fun. Kakarot never used the scanner. What applications do you envision this technology being used for in the future? Let us know in the comments section down below. Also, what Dragon Ball Z character do you think was the weakest? I think it was Chiaotzu. Yeah. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already, and click the sanitation for all the other cool stuff we do. I'm Raina Scully. And I'm William Haynes. Have a wonderful day. You thinking stuff over there? You trying to send some messages to me? I don't want to hear them. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, wow, that's very dirty. Thank <laughs> you.